Hi everyone, so I'm back with another great off-campus opportunity and this one is with Stripe. So if you don't know by now, Stripe is hiring for freshers and interns under their software engineering domain. So this is a great opportunity for all of you college students that are looking for a full-time job or an internship. Because let me tell you, Stripe is one of the best companies to work at. It is again one of those companies that pays equivalent to FANG or even more than FANG. But the hype of it is lesser compared to FANG. So you'll be facing lesser competition here compared to companies like Google, Amazon or Microsoft. So I highly suggest that all of you guys give this a try. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the roles. We're going to be talking about the technical requirements. We're going to be talking about the eligibility in details. And we're going to be talking about the most important thing of all. How do you get your resume shortlisted? So everything that you need is going to be within the video. So make sure that you watch it till the end. And just a quick reminder, guys, that I make daily videos about all of the off-campus openings that are out there and guides on how to crack them. So if you're a college student or a fresher looking for a job slash internship, then make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you do not miss out on any of the hiring alerts. And I've also opened a WhatsApp channel in which I'll be posting important resources and job hirings, etc. You can join that with the link in the description box. It's completely free, of course. So make sure that you subscribe and join the WhatsApp channel. All right, coming back to this opening, like I said, they're hiring for both SDE intern and full-time SDE role and talking more about the eligibility. So for the fresher role or the full-time role, the eligibility is if you're a 2026 grad, meaning if you're graduating in 2026, then you are eligible for the full-time role that they have, okay? So if you're graduating in 2026, if you are 2026 grad, you can apply for their full-time role. For the internship, if you're actively pursuing a bachelor's degree, if you're second year or third year or fourth year, then you can apply for their internship role. Okay, so that is the eligibility for fresher. If you're a 2026 grad, you can apply. And for intern, if you're in your third year, final year or second year, you can apply. That is the eligibility. Now talking about the degree in detail. So they haven't mentioned any specific degree. All they've mentioned is bachelor's degree in computer science, mathematics or related field. So that means that even if you're not doing BTEC, you can still apply if you're doing BSc in CS, if you're doing BCA or something else which is related to mathematics or computer science, you can apply. So it is pretty much open to all. Okay, so that's a great thing. The eligibility criteria here is pretty lenient. So I highly suggest all of you guys that are eligible, make sure that you apply for this. So that is the eligibility criteria. If you still have any doubt, feel free to ask me in the comments. I'll be there to clarify it for you. Now let's get a bit into the technical requirements. So they haven't mentioned any specific tech stack, but they have given preferences to certain programming languages. So it's better if you showcase these programming languages in your resume. And the programming languages that they're showing a preference for are going to be Java, JavaScript, Ruby, Scala, and Go. These are the programming languages that they are showing a preference for. So I highly suggest that you have one of these programming languages in your resume so that it will give you a good edge above candidates who don't have, right? And of course, I understand that Scala, Go and Ruby are languages that you may not be much into, especially in college, we are not aware of these languages. We don't work with these languages because they're not as popular as Java, Python, C, C++ for college students specifically, right? So it's not important that you have all of them, like I said. Even if you know Java, put it in your resume. Even if you know JavaScript, put it in your resume. And of course, out of Scala, Go and Ruby, if you have any of them, that will also give you a good edge. But it's not mandatory, right? If you have Java or JavaScript related technology or Java JavaScript in your resume, that is also pretty good. But you need to have at least one of these five aforementioned programming languages that will give you a bit of an edge, okay? Going deeper into the technical requirements or going deeper into what you need to have in your resume, to basically increase your chances of getting shortlisted. First, let's talk about the basics, right? Because people keep getting worried about basics. What is ATS? How do we improve ATS and all of these things? So of course, for a company like Stripe or any other similar company, to get your resume shortlisted, you need to have a good ATS friendly resume. Because before a human looks at your resume, it's going to get passed through ATS. It's going to get passed through their system. And if it gets a low score there, it is going to end up getting rejected. So how do you improve your ATS score? Or a better question, how do you even check your ATS score? So what I'll be doing, I'll be giving you two websites in the description box. You can use those websites to check your ATS score. And the goal here is to have an ATS score of minimum 80%. Okay, bare minimum, it should be 80%. It should not go below that. Of course, the more it is, the better it is. But at a minimum, it should not go below 80% or below 75%. That is like a safe spot that you need to be. Below that, your resume is going to see a lot of rejections. So you need to make sure that your ATS score is good. 
Now, of course, the next question you might be asking, but how do we improve our ATS score? We know how to check it. How do we improve it? So there are certain things that you can edit or you can tweak to basically improve your chances. So some of them are, let me explain in the video itself. One thing is having good grammar. Do not make any grammatical mistake. Do a spell check, do a grammar check, do a spacing check with AI and make sure that you have proper grammar, proper spaces and make sure that you have consistent everything. You know, you don't have any inconsistencies in the resume. So first thing is, of course, the grammar and everything. The second thing is using basically only the necessary information in the resume. A lot of people keep a lot of unnecessary things. They talk a lot about their hobbies. They talk about achievements which are not related to the fields that they're applying for. So if you put those things, that will again bring down the ATS code. Another thing that is important is having a parse friendly resume. So your resume's template should be parse friendly. It should not be difficult to parse for the ATS code. So for that, you can just use one of the templates in the description box. I've given a great template. You can just pretty much use it, edit it, and then work with it, right? So these are some points. You can find a few more points. You just check your ATS score. You'll be able to get a good idea because the website itself will tell you that these are the things that you need to work on, right? Like using different verbs, not having repetitive action items, having bullet points. All these things will help you in improving your ATS score. Now, after your ATS score is good, you have a perfect resume template. You have a great ATS score. After all of these things are done, of course, the next thing that matters is the content of your resume. So I've repeated this in all of my videos. You need to have high quality projects in your resume. For this role specifically, if you have any tech stacks or projects related to the programming languages that I mentioned, if you have any Ruby related projects, if you have any Go related projects, if you have any Java or JavaScript related tech stacks, showcase that in your resume. Okay, if you've worked with these tech stacks in any project, showcase that in your resume. But you need to make sure that the qualities of your projects are high. It's not any single page project it's not a clone project you need to make sure it's a high quality project and the best thing that you can do for your project is deploy it somewhere so give two links the deployed link and the github link so you need to put the deployed link of your uh, code your project it should be deployed somewhere either on versal netlify any place you can and the other thing is of course give the github link to your project and make sure that your project is a bit high quality it's a bit unique it's a bit complex it's not just a single page clone project or something like that okay because of course your projects are the most important thing if you're a fresher or if you're looking for an internship it is one of the most important thing and it can pretty much make or break your selection so if you do all of these things you'll have a great chance at getting your resume shortlisted now for the full-time role you can go down the route of referral although i don't suggest it for internship but for the fte role you can maybe see the idea of referral especially if you know someone in stripe and even if you don't know, it's fine. You can just find employees and then message them for referral. It's not very hard to do. I made an entire video about how you can ask for referral. You can check that out as well. So once you do all of these things, you'll have a pretty good chance at getting shortlisted. And of course, the next thing that you'll have to come across is going to be the interviews. Now, again, let me be clear. Stripe is a high paying company. So of course, the interviews of it is not going to be easy. They're not going to be easy. They're going to be around medium to hard range. So what I will be doing, I'll be giving you some interview experiences, articles from GFG and other places of people who have recently cracked Stripe. So you'll be able to understand from the interview experience, like how the interview process is going to be, what all you need to focus on, and you can pretty much prepare accordingly. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Go and have a look at the description box for more details about everything that we've talked about and prepare a proper resume and apply ASAP. Okay, the link to apply is of course in the description box, apply ASAP and make sure that you subscribe and watch out for more videos because right now is the peak time for hiring and you will be seeing a lot of hirings coming soon. So yeah, make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for the next video.